Hi, my name is Sarah, and this is Culture Kaleidoscope, a show where we look deeply at culture and media with a special attention to the subtleties. I think it's appropriate that my first video in this channel should be about something I unfortunately know a lot about firsthand, and that's the plight of the college adjunct. I've spent my entire adult life so far entrenched in academia because I'm a very impractical person, and for me that meant TAing through my master's program and then going on to work as an adjunct. I went into the experience feeling pretty optimistic, despite all the horrible things I'd heard, but after a few years I was forced to realize that although I love teaching, that path was not a sustainable one. I'm now phasing out of that line of work, but I think it's a huge site of injustice and something that deserves more attention. If you don't already know, an adjunct is a part-time college professor. They're often employed without any benefits, and they're contract employees, which means that they're paid hourly, by the credit, or by the course. Because they're contract employees, they have no job security. They're hired semester to semester, and if enrollment goes down because of, say, a global pandemic, they may find themselves suddenly unemployed or underemployed. To paint a more specific picture, allow me to explain what my situation looked like. I worked for four different schools at this point, and my average pay per three credit course was around $3,400 for the whole semester. My research has revealed that the national median pay is even lower. As of 2018, it was $2,700 per three credit course. In contrast, according to Glassdoor, tenured professors have an average salary of 72 k and based on the numerous job listings I've seen over the years, they're often expected to teach a maximum of six classes per calendar year. If I'd taught the same number of courses as a full-timer, I would have made around 20 k for the whole year. That's less than a third of what a full-timer would get for the same amount of work. 20k is not enough to live on, at least not in New York State when you live alone and have a cat to support. So I had to work a lot more than that. I've taught as many as six classes in one semester, plus I've had multiple other jobs at the same time. One semester, I was teaching five college classes, tutoring at another college 15 hours per week, and working nights teaching LSAT prep courses. For a couple days every week, I would leave my house at 7.30 in the morning and not get home until 11 at night. All that, and I was still making only a little more than half of what an average full-timer would make, with quadruple the workload. Some will point out that full-time professors have obligations outside of their teaching responsibilities, which is true. Many are expected to engage in research and scholarly publishing alongside their course load. I would still argue, though, that this does not account for the massive discrepancy in pay. I don't want to imply that full-time professors are overcompensated, because they're not. They deserve the pay that they earn. But adjuncts' jobs are just as challenging, and as valuable, and we're consistently exploited. If you've never thought about all the work that goes into being a college professor, and who could blame you, let me spell it out for you. In addition to showing up and teaching the course for two and a half hours a week, you also have to lesson plan, grade papers, answer student emails, and even hold office hours. All that stuff takes time, a lot of time, and when you're an adjunct, you don't get paid for any of it. Plus, all that work can literally take over your entire life if you're teaching as many as six classes at a time to make sure you can afford to pay your rent. If you've ever had a really disorganized, hard to reach, or slow to grade professor, chances are they were an overworked adjunct. To add another layer of financial instability to the mix, consider this. Unless they're among the lucky few to score summer and or winter classes, most adjuncts don't get paid at all for around four months every year. This, combined with how unpredictable their income is, since it's hard to anticipate how many classes they'll be offered, results in a situation where budgeting is really difficult or even impossible. I found myself in situations where I had to run up my credit card balance over the summer just to afford basic necessities. And one time, I had to take out a big loan from a bank to get me through a semester of underemployment. I don't want to make this about me, or to imply that me and my fellow adjuncts have it the worst out of anyone. This is only one of many, many criminally underpaid jobs that exist. The national minimum wage in the USA is currently, somehow, $7.25 per hour. That means that if a minimum wage worker worked 40 hours per week every single week for the whole year, taking zero days off, they would only make just over 15 k That, to me, is morally unconscionable, especially when you consider it in contrast with capitalists who make hundreds of thousands or millions or billions of dollars every year. It's just not possible that those people are working hundreds of times harder than someone who works at a retail store or fast food restaurant. Minimum wage service jobs are hard and exhausting, but I digress. I would locate the plight of the adjunct as part of the wider cultural shift that we've come to refer to as the gig economy. 
Google defines this concept as a labor market characterized by the prevalence of short-term contracts or freelance work as opposed to permanent jobs. I'm not the right person to do a whole analysis of the gig economy. And in fact, a YouTuber called Tom Nicholas already did that. And if you're interested, you should check it out. But suffice to say that this type of labor market benefits large institutions and corporations by allowing them to underpay disposable workers and avoid having to pay for their health insurance. This system entraps working people by forcing them to accept low-paying, unstable jobs to survive while selling them the false dream of freedom and being their own boss. It also traps them in a precarious position wherein if they start to make too much money, which to be clear is still not much money at all, they'll lose their access to low-cost health insurance and have to choose between paying hundreds of dollars per month for coverage that isn't great or going without. When I was still living the adjunct life, only one of my jobs offered health insurance, and I was only eligible for it two semesters out of the seven that I worked there. My last semester there, which happened to be during the current global pandemic, I couldn't afford insurance. The cheapest plan available to me through the public marketplace would have cost me $500 per month and would not have even covered my weekly therapy sessions. So I went uninsured and kind of just hoped I wouldn't have any serious medical issues. You may be thinking that adjuncts don't occupy quite the same space as Uber drivers and folks who work for Seamless, but I would argue that there's more overlap than you would think. We don't generally think of institutions of higher education as businesses, but more and more that has been becoming their focus, especially for private universities. For an in-depth look at this, I would suggest watching the segment of Patreon Act with Hassan Minaj called Is College Still Worth It? in which Hassan explores the corporatization of colleges in the context of the pandemic. In one part of the video, he explains how such a small portion of colleges' budgets are actually going to improving the quality of students' education. Some schools have billions of dollars tied up in hedge funds, investments, and real estate. My point is this. Colleges do function as businesses, and the decision to employ as many adjuncts as they do and to pay them so little is made with their bottom line in mind rather than the quality of their students' education. Here's an important statistic. Over 70% of college faculty are non-tenure track, and of that group, over 50% are part-time. This means that a sizable chunk of all college classes are being taught by overworked and underpaid adjuncts. Could these positions be phased out and replaced with more full-time jobs? Yes. Can colleges, especially big private ones, technically afford to pay their adjuncts better? Also yes. But I don't have much confidence that'll happen anytime soon. There are other nuances we could talk about, like the concept of degree inflation and how it used to be feasible to land a full-time academic job with a master's degree, and how the academic job market is currently glutted with PhDs, and how tenured baby boomer professors aren't retiring to make more room for younger folks for various economic reasons. But I don't want to get too much into the weeds of the workplace politics in academia. I'm more concerned with the impact all this has on students. Adjuncts wouldn't be doing what they do if they didn't love teaching. Goodness knows there isn't a financial incentive, so they must be driven by passion. I've heard countless students remark that some of their favorite teachers in college were actually adjuncts, and that includes me. When I earned my gender studies bachelor's degree, my favorite classes were taught by one particular adjunct. I remember one day I went to her class during a campus-wide demonstration on behalf of adjuncts on campus. She spent a few minutes commenting on the state of affairs, and I distinctly remember her saying, if you knew how little they paid me, you'd be surprised I don't eat dirt. She was delightfully weird and followed that up by muttering under her breath, and I kind of like the taste of dirt. All joking aside, though, after working as an adjunct for a while, I understand that there wasn't much hyperbole involved in her comment. So, there are plenty of dedicated adjuncts out there, but our situation also sets us up for major burnout and feelings of disillusionment. I'll confess that that's where I've been at for a while now. Thankfully, I'm not currently teaching. But last semester was one of the most demanding ones I've lived through, and I was so, so checked out. I did the best I could to be supportive and fair to my students, but I'm sure that there were many times I fell short, simply because I didn't have the bandwidth to do better. I'm suspect of higher education as an institution, which is something I'm sure I'll be talking about in future videos, but I believe in what it stands for at the most basic of levels. I think students who are paying a premium for their education deserve teachers who are supported, well-rested, and whose material needs are being met. The bottom line is this. If colleges want happy and well-supported students, they need to pay all of their professors fairly. If this is new information to you, and especially if you're a current college student, spread the word. Make it known to your peers and your institution that you are not okay with the current state of affairs. 
Speaking up won't change anything right away, but the first step towards justice is awareness. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. I'm honestly kind of self-conscious because I'm new to this and I'm a bit of a perfectionist, but I'm sure I'll get better at the whole video essay thing over time. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing. I'll be coming out with more content about academia, but also stuff in the realms of media analysis and broader cultural analysis. Let me know what you thought in the comments, and I'll see you next time. Bye.